Welcome everyone. In this video, I am going to derive the formula for quadratic approximation. For you to be able to follow my derivation, you should be familiar with linear approximation. So if that is not the case, I strongly encourage you to watch my one of my previous videos about linear approximation. You can find it on the cards right now. So let's go over linear approximation real quick. In case of a linear approximation, we would have a function and we would, let's say the function is f of x and coordinates are x and y. We would say that if I zoom in in this point x naught, if I zoom in close enough, the function will resemble a line. So I can model it, I can approximate it as a line. Okay, and the formula that we actually derived in my video, in my previous video, was that f of x is approximately equal to f prime, oops, not f prime, f of x naught plus f prime of x naught, which is the first derivative of our function, times x minus x naught. Okay, and I want to call this term our linear approximation, and I want to call it represented with L of x. So linear approximation is represented with L of x, all right? And as you can see, it is a first degree polynomial. It is a formula for a line, or it is a linear formula. It is a linear function. So what about quadratic approximation? Let me write quadratic, and I am going to represent it with, you guessed it, q of x. So how about, how about it? Well, we again have the same coordinate plane, and let's say that we have the same function, even though it doesn't look the same, I know. We are again interested in x naught, and this time, instead of modeling our formula, our function, as a line, we will model it as a parabola, as a second-degree polynomial. So maybe something like this. So in the end, we will say that f of x is approximately equal to a well to a quadratic formula right to a quadratic approximation q of x and notice q of x should be in the form ax squared plus bx plus c because this is the general formula for a for a parabola for a quadratic for a second degree function all right so the main question of the video is how can we find a b and c and to do that i want to take a general approach all right let's just zoom out from this picture and let's say if we want to make any approximation it might be a cubic a linear quadratic any approximation what do we want well we sure want that we sure want to, as the first thing that the value of our function at x naught at our point of interest should be equal to our approximations value, right? This A stands for approximation. So if we evaluate both our function and the approximation at the same point, at the point of interest, we should get the same value. This only makes sense. Okay, but if we go a step even further, if we take a step even further, and if we say, I want to capture my function's behavior as I move away from the point of interest, so that I can get values that are as close as possible to the actual value. So what do I mean by the function's behavior? I just mean the derivative. It is just a fancy way of saying it. I just mean that the derivative of f of f prime of x naught, the derivative of f of x, should be equal to my function's derivative evaluated at that point, right? And if I want to capture the behavior of my derivative going a step even further i want the second derivatives to be equal as well so this is the general idea for any approximation now you can notice that you can notice that here these two are fulfilled with a linear approximation linear approximation just does fine it does good and how do i know well if you substitute x naught here in this formula, you will get f of x naught. And 
well, you will get, this will go to zero and you will get f of x naught. It is done. It is cool. If you take the derivative of our function, of, of our approximation here, well, our approximation is going to give us, as its derivative, this guy. And if you take the derivative of f of x at point x naught, you still get the same result. So the linear approximation handles the first two options. But if I want to handle all of them, that's where quadratic approximation does it all. And you can already sense that quadratic approximation has linear approximation in it. But at the end of the video, you will see that that is clearly the case. But already you might be sensing that something like that is going to happen. So let's turn the new page and let's work it out what a and b and c are going to be. So q of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. If we take the derivative once, we will get 2ax plus b. And if we take the derivative twice, we're going to get 2a. All right. So let's just evaluate these. Uh, let's just evaluate these formulas at q0, q of 0. So at q of 0, the, the first two terms are gone. So we just have c for the derivative at q prime of 0. The first term is cancelled. We just have b. And for the second derivative, we don't have any x in the formula. So we just have 2a. It is a constant function. Well, I just argued that for any approximation, I want to be able to make f of 0 equal to q of 0. So f of 0 should be equal to c. And boom, just like that, we found a formula for c. It is f of 0. Well, I also said that I want the first derivative evaluated at my point of interest to be equal to my approximation and the function have the same value. I want them to have the same derivative at that point. Well, this should be equal to b then. I just proved it here. So boom, we found the value for b. It is f prime of 0. And similarly, if we look at the second derivatives, this is equal to 2a. So a is equal to f double prime of 0 divided by 2. All great. So I can say that, I can say that, let me write it with, well, let's write it with black. So q of x is equal to f of 0 plus, and I'm writing it in this direction, okay, from right to left, f of 0 plus, well, b is f prime of 0 times x plus ax squared. So a is f double prime of 0 divided by 2, and we have our x squared. This is for the case where x naught is equal to 0. This approximation is centered at x naught is equal to 0. It is centered at 0. So we just found that if I want to make this the approximation itself, I will just put f here and put approximately equal signs here. And notice this is the case for the approximation at 0. If I want the general case, well, for the general case, I will simply have f of x here. That is, at the end, what I am trying to approximate. And it will be approximately equal to f of x naught. I mean, right, instead of 0, I am substituting x naught. So for the other term, for f prime of 0, I should have f prime of x naught. Then here I had x, and I won't have x just. I will have x minus x naught. Because here we had x minus 0 actually, but since x minus 0 is x, I didn't write the 0 there. Alright? And if I put the plus, we have f double prime of, instead of 0, we have x naught divided by 2. And now we have x minus x naught, the quantity squared. So this is the general formula for quadratic approximation. And you can check that it works. For example, if we substitute x naught in this formula, 
we would get that f of x naught. So we would get f of x naught, and our approximation would give f of x naught as well. So they would be equal. If we look at the derivatives of them, the derivative of f of x is going to be f prime of x. If we evaluated it at x naught, we will get f prime of x naught. And if we evaluate this approximations derivative, this is gone. This is gone. You have this. And here, this two comes forward, but this factor stays. So x minus x naught, it cancels as well. You get actually f prime of x naught. And if you do the case for yourself for the second derivative, you will see that, in fact, you get the same result. So this is fulfilling our three criteria. This is the quadratic approximation of f of x at any point x naught. And I want to please take your attention here. I want you to look at this and ask yourself, do I know this? And you sure do. This is the linear approximation of x. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? We just showed that then. We just showed that then. Q of x is equal to L of x plus some expression and it turns out that that expression is f double prime of x naught divided by 2 and we have x minus x naught squared so as i said the uh, the quadratic approximation has the linear approximation in it so quadratic approximation is more precise you could say than the linear approximation but I want to raise a question here. Is it possible that I could find a cubic approximation, a third degree polynomial, and would it have q of x in it plus some business? And perhaps I continue this on and on. I want a quartic approximation, a fifth degree approximation, a sixth degree, seventh degree approximations. Is there a pattern here? And yes, there is a pattern. This is the thing what Taylor series gives us. And I will go over it hopefully in a future video. But this is it for this video. If you want to take just a couple of things away from this video, I would say that the most important thing is we are capturing the function's behavior at the point. It's derivatives, it's derivatives behavior. So we capture the function's value. We capture its behavior, which is its derivative. And we capture the derivatives behavior, which is the second derivative. We use these results to end up with a second degree equation. And we see that that second degree equation, which is our quadratic approximation, has the linear approximation in itself. Anyways, I hope it was helpful. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please write them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.